trained on its approaches to Kingsbridge Station in the days when steam engines were a regular part of life in the South Hams. This archive 8mm cine footage captured by Reg Sampson is a reminder of how rail commuter life used to be in one of the most picturesque areas of Devon. The memories of the 12 mile journey from Brent winding its way through the beautiful Avon Valley still lives on in the hearts and minds not only of locals but of people from all over the UK and as we shall see later from as far away as Australia. What has been affectionately referred to by some as the Primrose Line is indeed rich in legend. And from the archives of the Cookworthy Museum in Kingsbridge, these images are a reminder of the humble beginnings of the construction work. After a number of full starts and at a cost of £180,000, including the building of 48 bridges, the official opening of the branch took place on the 19th of December 1893. On that day, the 8.45am from Brent had a distinguished passenger list, including Viscount Emblin, Colonel Edgecombe and Mr Hubbard, all directors of the GWR. At each station stop, excited crowds were waiting to greet the train. It was the beginning of an era, and from that day onwards, an object of lasting devotion had established itself on the landscape. Local dignitaries lined the platform at Kingsbridge as the band of the King's own Scottish borderers provided the music. The GWR had allocated a thousand free tickets as a marketing exercise and children were not allowed aboard. That same Mr Huxham who saw the splendour of the first train also witnessed the passing of the last one on the 14th of September 1963. A shabby BR diesel unit made its last journey, the memory of which was conscripted to the archives of history. This was the end of an era. The mainline track from Exeter to Plymouth branched at Brent for the 12 mile run to Kingsbridge. Running under the main A38 road, the line picked up the River Avon for the next eight miles. Avonwick Station was in no man's land, situated between Avonwick and Ditford in Becknell. Then, onto a wooded valley after having crossed the river a number of times, into Gerrabridge Station, just over five miles from Brent. The valley then opens up to the west with thick woods to the east and still following the River Avon runs into Lodswell Station a mile away from the village of the same name. On then to Sorley Tunnel and finally into the terminus at Kingsbridge perched high above the town on a hillside beside the Sulcombe Road. This then was the journey's end. The early history of the Kingsbridge branch is shrouded with considerable controversy. The Bristol and Exeter Railway completed its line from London on the 1st of May 1844 and at that time it was the longest stretch of line in the land at 194 miles. On the 4th of July 1844, Royal Assent was given to the South Devon Railway Company to construct the line all the way to Plymouth. On the 30th of May 1846, Tynmouth was opened. Newton Abbott followed on the 30th of December in that year. Totnes on the 20th of July 1847 and finally Plymouth on the 2nd of April 1849. But things could well have been different for when Isambard Kingdom Brunel surveyed the Exeter to Plymouth section in 1836 the motive power then available was incapable of dealing with the heavy gradients of the shorter route around the southern edges of Dartmoor. The South Devon Railway was in favour of linking centres of population on an alternative western route. From Exeter, the line would go direct to Torquay. Then spanning the Dart would move into Dartmouth. Then on to Tor Cross. Around Kingsbridge for Salcombe. On to the town of Modbury. And finally into Plymouth. Had this route been chosen, it is likely that Kingsbridge would have a rail connection even today. Kingsbridge, apparently of Saxon origin, had a history associated with transportation. The demand for food ensured the development of agriculture in the area of the South Hams and Kingsbridge became its focal point with a busy seaport teeming with sailing schooners loading wool, tools, ropes and building materials. Then there was the brewing of cider and beer, textile and flour mills. 
The Kingsbridge estuary in the later part of the 18th century was teeming with ships of all shapes and sizes waiting to discharge their cargoes of coffee, tobacco, sugar, timber and grain amongst other important merchandise. No wonder then that the rail link was so important to this little town. With it came the day tripper and holiday maker and a steady tourist industry began to grow to enrich the community. March 1997 and a book called The Kingsbridge Branch is being launched at the Harbour Bookshop. Dermot Reynolds and Ken Williams, after many years of careful research, signed copies on the day of release. Demand is high. The line was greatly loved by people from all over the country. But why such interest still in something that had ceased nearly 30 years earlier? I think mainly because people regarded it as part of their holiday. They got off the mainline train at Brent and then they joined the branch train. And the branch train was actually the, the start of their holiday. They were going somewhere, they were ending up in Kingsbridge. And Kingsbridge, they might go on to one of the other um, coastal areas, but to, to them, Kingsbridge was part of their holiday. And I think that's why people over the years have always remembered this as a wonderful sunny South Devon holiday started on the Kingsbridge branch. The station at Kingsbridge was perched on land rising above the town. A distinctive curved main platform with an engine release road and bay platform extended to a loco shed and a small carriage enclosure. The busy goods yard was accessed by way of several roads. The locomotives had to climb a curved embankment with a 1 in 50 gradient when leaving on the up journey towards Sorley. Today, an industrial estate has obscured almost all traces of the once busy rail terminus, but at the end of the estate the old good shed still stands as a reminder of the way things used to be. Shrouded in fencing and wire, the buildings stand empty, but what a story they could tell. After a careful and lengthy search, the images you are about to see were provided by Paul Johnson. With avid affection for the line, his collection of old cine film footage reawakens nostalgic memories for those who remember how it used to be.